Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Blue Collar Consulting Group podcast. I am your host, the founder of the Blue Collar Consulting Group, active duty soldier and overall nice guy, Gary Roth. Really glad to have you with you. Have you with you. Wow. Have you with me on this very important episode of the podcast where I answer the question, what are some key components to uh, a podcast? I, I want to start a podcast. What's what's the deal? Um Should I start a podcast? How do I start a podcast? What do I need? Where do I go? Basically, there's five and a half key points that I'm going to make. The first one we're going to start off with is the big idea. All right. Listen, podcasts are everywhere. Millions of listens are occurring each day. It's great for marketing. It's great for branding. It's great uh, for me. I use it as a creative outlet. Uh, I also use it to market the services of of this business. Uh, I also talk about I have a. I actually have four uh, podcasts in total. For me, it's awesome. I love to talk. I have the gift of gab, and so I'm very thankful that I can come on here completely free, record my voice, transmit it to the world, and have like three people listen to it. But maybe if I just motivate or inspire one of those people, then it would all be worth it. So tonight, I'm on my Blue Collar Consulting Group podcast. This is a podcast where I talk about business, marketing, sales, leadership, things like that. And I have four podcasts total. One is about dating after divorce. One is purely inspirational and motivational. And then one is a more religious oriented one. The reason why I have multiple podcasts is because that allows me to focus on that individual topic. If a celebrity or like a Joe Rogan podcast, that guy can talk about a lot of different stuff. He talks about nutrition and exercise and martial arts and then he also has guests right and they talk about a variety of things but he's ascended to such a high platform that he can have basically a variety show think of your all-time greats like your talk show host johnny carson jay leno uh oprah winfrey you know phil donahue geraldo you know whatever jerry springer (laughs) just kidding these are folks that were basically variety shows now when you're first starting out I don't recommend a variety show. I recommend uh, speaking on a specific topic. And that goes into the very first point. If you're going to start a podcast, you have to know why you are starting it. What's the big idea? What are you going to talk about? Uh, You know, why would somebody want to listen to your show? Are you going to talk about G.I. Joe figurines? Are you going to talk about astronauts? I mean, whatever you decide to do, you have to do what's called niche down. You have to be very specific, not overly specific. You can't talk about the one shoelace, but if you want to talk about shoes, then you're in. You've got to have enough knowledge about a subject that you can produce multiple episodes of a particular topic for a very long time. There are some podcasts out there that intentionally ran for one year and that's it and they're done. There are some podcasts that are still going on to this day that have thousands of episodes. You have to decide what you're going to do. But if you can only talk about it for five or ten minutes, number one, that's not a broad enough topic. That's probably too specific or you don't know enough about it and you should not start a podcast. I would assume that if you had something to say or you were kind of opinionated, that would be fine, but you would want to kind of limit those things to what you knew a lot about. For example, if you want to talk about politics, that's awesome, but be prepared. That's a very saturated space. That's a very volatile space, and you better come with it if you talk about politics. But at the same time, if you want to talk about your life as a mom, go for it. That's amazing. You could probably be actually really helpful to somebody, and Lord knows that... I know a lot of moms that could use some help or maybe something about personal finance or working on cars or classic cars or pine trees or whatever the case may be, just so long as you are able to expand on the topic. And then not only that, have a general idea of who would want to listen. So that's kind of step number two, your audience, okay? Your audience and your format. Think about what and how you're gonna talk about your topic. So for example, are you gonna have an interview show? Are you gonna have a solo show? How are you gonna present this information? Are you gonna be excited? Are you gonna be kind of soothing? Are you gonna have music? Are you gonna have noises in the background? Whatever you decide is totally fine. Whatever the format you choose is totally acceptable. There are multiple guests, there's single guests, there's solo. 
if you're good, you can make a go at it. There's not one particular format that shines as the best format. If you have trouble expanding on a topic, however, having a guest or having a few guests is a great way to make for a really fun or educational show. There's a lot of people that enjoy guests. Not only that, when you have a guest on your show, when you have a guest on your show, you can actually leverage their popularity if they agree to share your show with their audience. So having an interview, having a guest can be really helpful. I have had a plethora of guests on this show uh, with mixed results. I've had New York Times bestselling authors. I've had engineers. I've had just really cool people. And, you know, just because you have a guest doesn't mean that your podcast is going to explode overnight. It helps, but it's going to take a long time. There's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of crappy podcasts out there. You might consider some of mine crappy. That's okay. I forgive you. But at the same time, you have to be aware that people may not like your show, and that's okay. You can switch it. You can switch format. You can try introducing it to other people. That's all fine and dandy. But what you're going to have to do, you're going to have to be somewhat of an expert or more than a little bit knowledgeable of what you're talking about. And then again, think about the audience. Who would want to listen to your podcast? This is something that I struggle with a lot. I have difficulty finding out who would want to listen to my to my show. The good news is, comma slash, however, is that in my most recent podcast, my Dating After Divorce podcast, guess what? It's for people that have started to date after their divorce. That is specific enough. It's perfect. And yet it gives me the creative license to expand out to multiple areas like dating, like relationships, communication. But the premise there is that I am talking to people that are dating after their divorce. So for me, that's probably the one that I've hit on the best that I'm super excited about. I think I'm 14 episodes in. I'm loving it. It's a lot of fun. It's exciting. So again, with that one, the format is solo right now. I can have guests. The audience is specifically tailored to people after their divorce. Now, I don't I, I don't see any reason for that particular show to be geared to white people or men or women or Hispanics or foreign language speakers. It's anybody. It's situational based. You can do a show that's demographic based. If you are approaching a particular cultural issue, like maybe uh, pay inequalities amongst uh, the different ethnicities, that may appeal to a minority audience. You may direct that towards a minority audience. That's fine. Just do that intentionally. Don't expect a show about building man muscles to be appealing to a 70-year-old grandmother in Wisconsin. Okay, so know what you want to talk about and then know your audience. That's really key. In fact, I would probably spend a lot of time researching your audience first so that you can tailor your shows. If you want it to be successful, you can tailor your shows to the people that are actually going to be interested. Because let me tell you that one of the most def deflating feelings in the world is spending all this time, taking all this effort, making this effort, and then producing a show that gets six listens in a week. Trust me, I've been there. Most of my shows are not much better than that. So I don't know if I'm just, if I just suck or what. But the key is to know that audience. And whatever audience you choose is fine. It could be lizard lovers in the upper northwestern United States. It doesn't matter. There's an audience for everything. And in 2021, there is a community for everything. Believe, just believe me, it's true. So, so far we've covered why do you want to do a podcast? What do you want to talk about? You got to be fairly knowledgeable in it. Know your format, interview, solo, group, whatever. And then who is going to listen to it? Finally, not finally. Step number three, let's talk about equipment, okay? Your phone is okay. A little a little set of earbuds is okay, but I would not recommend doing that for very long. Listen, I okay, look. Podcast microphones are not that expensive. You can get a nice little podcast mic, some Rune or whatever the brand, I don't pay attention to a lot of brand names. You can get a cheap one for like 40 bucks. It'll sit right on your desk. It'll give you a above average sound quality. You can talk right into it. You can buy yourself a little $3 pop filter like I've got right here, and you can produce a quality show, all right? You don't need to drop a whole lot of money, but you should probably drop some. 
Nobody like, we're just in the world now. Podcasts are produced well. They just are. And if you're not producing a decent quality podcast audio, okay, then you're behind the game. And this is nothing personal, you know, but really if you expect to get all this money for free, it's it's not going to happen. There is an investment. Uh, you could buy used microphones online. Again, even just a little cheap one from Amazon or eBay or whatever. I'm going to put some links in the show notes. If you're watching this on a platform, I, I've got a few links for microphones that you can check out. Uh, they go right to Amazon, maybe Walmart. They're really not that bad, okay? They make a lot of kits. And even if you're doing like a video blog or TikTok or whatever, I would highly consider that you get a decent microphone so that you can sound good. If you sound like crap, nobody wants to listen. And it's a huge turnoff. It's a massive distraction. You just want to stay away from it. So get you a good microphone. It's worth it if you want to podcast for the long haul. It's your voice. You're talking into the stupid thing. Buy a decent microphone so that you don't sound like crap. Don't put yourself at that disadvantage. Next thing is probably almost as important, post-production. I run all of my podcasts through Audacity. It is literally free. I watched five or six videos on YouTube. I figured out my little steps of progression so that I can take out the noise balance out the highs and the lows, smooth out my voice just a little bit to make it appealing. Now, if you're watching me on Facebook Live, Blue Collar Consulting Group on Facebook, by the way, I go live on there when I do these, you can see that when I'm recording in space through my cell phone, it doesn't sound very great. But the podcast that you hear on the Blue Collar Consulting Group podcast is through my nice mic that's through Audacity that is filtered and cleaned up through Audacity and it's mixed in with a little bit of music. You can do all that for free. Post-production, basic post-production, all you need post-production can be done for free. You got to post-produce your sound. You got to clip off the ends. You need to balance out the highs and the lows and you need to make sure that nothing gets clipped, okay? Take the time and learn basic production. I knew nothing about it when I started. Now I produce fairly high quality audio, high quality audio that's pleasing to the ear. You can tinker with it, you can toy with it. It's actually a lot of fun. And the best part about it is there are millions of YouTube videos to show you how to use it. So just to recap, get you a decent mic, but your post-production software, which what you run your sound through before you post it, completely free. So At most, you might be into this thing for 50 bucks, and that decent microphone that you buy will last you forever, and you can use it on a variety of platforms, okay? Post-production. Speaking of post-production, let's talk about hosting. Okay, what's hosting? Hosting is where you upload your files to. Hosting is where people go to hear your show. I'm hosting this on Anchor. When I first joined Anchor, it was amazing a couple of years ago. All you had to do was upload your sound, throw an ad on it. They even sponsor you right out of the gate, which was amazing. And then type your notes and hit publish. And it would automatically go to like 11 or 12 different platforms. Anchor now, since they were purchased by piece of crap Spotify, they don't do that anymore. They automatically post it to Spotify. But then now you have to go in and manually create all of your other distribution channels and then post your RSS feed, which is basically just a piece of computer code that tells these platforms when you've uploaded another episode. So no, I'm not happy about it, and I'm strongly considering hosting on a different platform that would then back distribute to other places. So something to think about, okay? Um, And then they might even have better sponsorship deals. I don't know. So anyway, that's hosting. Do your research on hosting, but if you want to start somewhere, go to Anchor. It is super easy. They just don't distribute like they used to, okay? That's anchor.fm. All right, finally, if you do this podcast, again, you have to ask yourself why. You want people to listen to you, right? Do you want one person to listen to you, or do you want a 1,000? Do you want to turn it into something that can make you money, or do you just need somebody to hear you talk? Well, I don't know what that is for you, but for me... I hope to earn a living from my podcasts one day. That's why I do so many of them. That's why I'm doing this one. 
so that I can convince enough people to listen to. People have to suffer through a 30 second ad and I get like two cents from everybody that listens to it. So if I can get 30 or 40,000 listeners, I can get like 12 bucks. But eventually, I hope that it's big enough that I can combine it with you know my other marketing skills and earn a little bit of a living after I retire from the army. So going back to number one, the big idea, why? Why are you doing a podcast? You have to think about these things. And then because if you just wanna rant, that's one thing. But if you wanna make a show that makes money and has some longevity, you may have to think about tempering your topic or your tone on that topic uh, a little bit. So lastly, once you've created this nice show, you got a good idea, you're talking about stuff that you love, you've got some decent equipment, you're talking solo, you're doing interviews, whatever, okay? Then you got a decent microphone, you got a quiet space to record, you've got Audacity for free, you've got it hosted. Now you gotta talk about the stupid thing because you want people to listen to it, right? If you want it to grow, you're gonna have to learn to market it. Now, this could be as simple as sharing a link on your Facebook. It could be Facebook ads. It could even be, you know, word of mouth. It could be, I mean, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. There's a thousand different ways that you can talk about it online on social media. It could be in your signature block on your emails. You can get t-shirts. You can get, uh, uh, you get, you can get business cards. I mean, the, the options are endless. Okay. That's where marketing comes in and people have made a living on teaching people how to market their podcast and, and get it out there to the world. So however you want to look at it, however you want to do it, you're going to have to market it if you want it to grow. And that's a whole other thing. So you can't be afraid to share it with friends and family. You're going to need that feedback. You're going to need that feedback from people that you trust that are willing to give you critical feedback. Because if you don't, then you'll never know if you're doing good. You never know if you're doing crap. Um, and you'll never change. And then you'll wonder why you only get 12 downloads a year. So listen, that's the long and short of it. Think about why. Get you a freaking general idea of the show that you want to have. Get you a decent microphone. Get you Audacity, it's free, host it somewhere, and then freaking tell the world about it at every opportunity. That's how a podcast works. Now, if you don't know what a podcast is, it's basically a radio show, a radio segment, it's people talking that's uploaded to the internet. That's what a podcast is. They are awesome. They are entertaining. They are helpful. They are encouraging. They're in informational. They're everything, and they're amazing. And the great thing about podcasts is that you can consume them while you're doing other stuff. I can listen and learn to a podcast, listen to a podcast, learn from a podcast while I'm doing the dishes, while I'm working in my office, while I'm X, Y, Z, and whatever. They're incredibly helpful. They will change your life, and I love them. So listen, thank you for tuning in. My name is Gary Roth. I am the founder of the Blue Collar Consulting Group. If you need help getting started on a podcast, if you need help with podcast ideas or how it works, send me an email. Gary at bluecollarconsultinggroup.com. Again, Gary at bluecollarconsultinggroup.com. You hop on there. I'll, I'll reply back. You can connect with me on social media. Blue Collar Consulting Group is everywhere. Okay. I'm easy to find. If you have any podcast questions whatsoever, if you should start one, production questions, distribution, marketing, I can answer them all. I do everything well with the exception of I'm not that popular. I'm not that popular because I'm not that dynamic. But a lot of you out there have dynamic stories, dynamic ideas, and I think that a lot of you could do really well on a podcast because a lot of you are passionate, a lot of you are highly educated and highly knowledgeable of certain subjects. So I would encourage you to start a podcast if you have the inkling, if you have the desire to do so, I can help. Again, Gary blue at bluecollarconsultinggroup.com or simply bluecollarconsultinggroup.com. Hit us a message on there. Be good to go. Thanks for tuning in. Share this episode. Help us grow. And we'll talk to you soon. Hear you on the next one. Bye.